Well, then there's a very potent set of tools that you can leverage to overcome states of lack of motivation, overcome procrastination, and indeed can help you deal with things like overthinking as it relates to procrastination and lack of motivation as well. So the way this works is the following. If you recall, a peak in dopamine is followed by a trough in dopamine. That trough in dopamine is experienced as pain or wanting or craving. That pain that I'm referring to is actually a craving or a wanting. And it's a craving or wanting for a specific state that you would like to achieve that is different than the one that you're in. You want to get out of that trough. And as you recall from earlier in the episode, that trough is the stimulus for the ongoing release of dopamine that provides the propeller, the motivation to go forward and seek some goal. Okay? So when we are not motivated, when we are in a so-called amotivated state, or when we are procrastinating, or when we just sort of can't seem to get in gear, the key to getting out of that pain trough is one of two things. I already told you earlier, you can just wait and wait till your motivation comes back. And a lot of people do wait. In fact, they procrastinate. They start doing other things that are less painful than the state that they happen to be in. What they're essentially doing here is a mild type of addiction replacement. In other words, rather than be in the painful state and wait for it to pass, they're doing things that give them some sense of accomplishment, ostensibly to give them the sense that they're completing things. Now, what's interesting about this dynamic is, first of all, it's extremely common. And second of all, a lot of people will use this as a tactic so that they get very close to the deadline to complete something. And then they go into a sort of pseudo panic and then use anxiety as a way to leverage their mental and physical resources to complete that thing. So how can we overcome procrastination? If you were to take that state of being unmotivated, of procrastinating, and actually do something that's harder than being in that amotivated state, in other words, doing something that's more effortful, even painful, you can rebound yourself out of that dopamine trough much more quickly. What I'm referring to is the fact that, for instance, if you're feeling amotivated, but you find yourself cleaning the house as a way to procrastinate, you can say, well, cleaning the house is harder than sitting down and doing nothing. But actually, in that moment or in those moments, that's not the case, or else you wouldn't be doing it. The reality is that the dopamine system works according to what feels hard or easy in the moment. In other words, if you're feeling amotivated, you need to do something and put yourself into a state that's harder than the state you're in. So for instance, if you're sitting around feeling amotivated or you find yourself tending to tasks that are irrelevant to the goal that you really should be focused on, you need to put your body and mind into a state of discomfort quickly. And the way to do that is to either engage in some tangential activity, meaning an activity not related to your goal that puts your body into a very different state. So here again, I'll default to the obvious one, which is something like cold shower or cold immersion, which not only increases dopamine long-term or over several hours rather, but for most people is experienced as pain. That pain causes a rebound out of that dopamine trough faster than it would occur if you had just stayed in that amotivated state and waited for it to go away or done something like cleaning up that for whatever reason felt like it required less friction. When I say friction, I mean limbic friction. Your limbic system is always in this dialogue with your forebrain and limbic friction goes two ways. Limbic friction can be you're tired and you don't want to do something and so you have to quote unquote motivate to do it, energize yourself to do it or limbic friction can be that you're nervous and scared and anxious to do something and you have to calm yourself in order to lean forward into action in order to do that thing despite the anxiety. 